Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how I added scripting support to my game using Miniscript. This allows modders, artists, and even myself to create small text files that can be compiled at runtime to define logic within my game. In my last video, I added custom map support to my game Project Impulse, which if you haven't heard is a multiplayer physics-based VR shooter that you can wishlist on Steam right now. But if you recall from the last video, you can add scripts to addressables. You can only add components that have been compiled within the build. This is where a mini script comes in. It's a beginner friendly scripting language that can be used to define logic and included in addressables because it's just plain text. You can find the project on GitHub and it's very well documented on the mini script website, which I would highly recommend going over before watching this. To showcase the power of mini script, I've just created a couple of very simple examples. And the first one that I'm gonna go over is just simply printing out to the standard output. Um, within my compiler here, you can see that I have a standard output that will debug and log anything that gets printed from the mini script. So if I go to my hello world.txt, as you can see, it will print out hello world. So if we try it and compile, as you can see, it prints out hello world. But where mini script is really useful is you can change this at runtime so the game hasn't been stopped and I can recompile this and as you can see it prints out hello YouTube. The next thing that I want to go over is intrinsics. Intrinsics are essentially functions that can run within the mini script and they're defined by you the programmer so it's kind of like an API. So in this case I've created a simple one for moving the object to a random position and any one of the users that want to create a mini script can use this function within their code. So I've created a simple example that moves to random position every one second. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see, it's moving around every one second. And again, the cool thing about this is that I can change this so I can have it every half a second instead and try to compile that again. And as you can see, it's updating a lot faster. With intrinsics, you can also have parameters. There's a lot of documentation on parameters that you can gain. Um, so I wanted to go over one that's a little bit more complex. So in this case, I'm looking for a vector three, but since there is no such thing as a vector three in Miniscript, I've just created a dictionary that has an X, Y, and Z coordinate, and it'll just simply add it onto the position. So if you go to the function vector three to Miniscript, you can see that I'm trying to get a value with the V3 identifier and if it does have a value then i'm going to try to convert it to a val map and within that val map or dictionary i'm looking for the x y and z coordinates so let's take a look at the mini script and how that would work so as you can see we have a simple example it simply just moves to the right three times and then back three spaces at the end but as you can see we have this dictionary with the x y and z coordinates so if we go over here and compile our move script, as you can see, it moves three to the right and then three back. The final thing that I wanna look at is events. When you're creating a game, you wanna know when things happen, when a player dies or when a player hits a certain button. So we can do that using the event system that we're gonna create. In the compiler, I like to add a constant underscore events is equal to an array. Um, that way, every user script that I try to compile will always have this uh, events. And I'm just using this on key press example. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create some arguments. So this is just any information that I can use within the function. And then in this case, I just want to know what key is the player pressing. And then with the arguments done, I can invoke an event called on key press. What will happen is it's going to look within the mini script for a function with the exact same name. And if it does have it, then it's going to map that to the handler. It's essentially like a pointer to this function. And we're going to go through some stuff just to make sure that we have an event list. And then we're going to create a new event, which is again, is just a val map or a dictionary. And we're going to have an invoke, which is going to point to that function. And we're going to just simply pass in the arguments that here as the arguments key within the event. And then within the event list, we're gonna add that to our queue or our array. And then within the actual uh, mini script, we need to go through that underscore events. So as you can see here, we're just doing a while loop. We're going through every single event and we're going to pull out the event so that it is no longer in the queue. 
And then we're going to hit that invoke keyword, which is just simply mapping to, in this case, on key press. And since on key press takes some arguments, we're going to pass in the next event dot args. And within the on key press, as you can see, I'm taking the key by just simply going to args dot key, which again, we defined within here in the compiler. And then with that key, we can tell, you know, what direction is the player trying to go in? Is it trying to go up, down, left, or right with the WASDA keys? And then we're using our move function to move. So if we head over to our game, we go to our player, we hit compile. As you can see, when I use the keys on the keyboard, MidiScript is listening to those events and doing the right thing, moving the cube. I want to go over some more practical examples within my game so you know what the power of MidiScript actually is. So I'm using it for game modes. And I want to go over constants first. Um, as you can see in my constants, I have a bunch of variables that map to IDs. And this just allows for the users creating the scripts to have a way more human readable way to type things. So instead of typing, you know, I want to spawn in with pist or weapon zero, instead I can say I want to spawn in with pistol, which will map directly to zero. Going into an actual mini script game mode, um, this is sandbox. So there's only really one thing that we want to do is when one player dies, we want them to respawn. So we can go ahead and read the event on player death. And when a player dies, we have a victim and an attacker. And we want to just simply respawn them at a random point. So we want to pass in the victim, the delay, and the weapon ID, which in this case is pistol or zero. Then we use an intrinsic function, which is get random respawn point. And then we use another intrinsic, which is respawning the player. And within the victim or player, they all have an identification number, so that way I know which player to respawn. And again, we have the delay point and the weapon ID. And what's cool about uh, Miniscript is that we can simply do a two val map, and we can just pass in, for example, a player. And now I know that any time a player gets passed in, I'll have all of this information, like their ID, their team ID, uh, their name, kills, deaths, etc. So this is really useful, for example, in team deathmatch. So the only time that I want to award a point to a team is if they're on separate teams. So I can go in here and can I check, is the victim and the attacker on the same team? If they aren't, then I can award the attacking team with score. And then this is again another intrinsic. And if this adds score, uh, which returns actually the new score, which is just score plus one in this case, is this new score above the max score? If it is, then I can add a win to the attacking team again, and I can announce to the attacking team that they've won with that sound ID of zero, and the other team that they've lost with a sound ID of one. Overall, I think that Miniscript is a very powerful tool that not enough people are talking about. I've come across multiple projects while developing my game, and none of them have made me as excited as Miniscript has. They have an amazing documentation and a really helpful Discord server, so I figured I'd make a video so we can get more people talking about Miniscript. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you found it useful, please consider subscribing and supporting me on Ko-Fi. Thank you to my current members, Mufin, Bruno, Nimble Whale, Soup or Pie, Yearful, Jay, Peyton, 4XHA, Gibbs, and Aiden.